again, I've never even I've been sort of eye open here. I don't. I've never. I've always been ignorant to this kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, so it's very cool to um to be sort of introduced to it in a, in a friendly. And you know, like this. you know what resonated with me because I have two daughters myself. Oh yeah. Um, the eldest is turning four, <laughs> uh, and the youngest is turning two. So oh wow! Yeah. At that time too, I was kind of like having that like, you know, like I need to be better. Yeah, them, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like for, I, always for them, right? Always for them. I need to like kind of, I need to now teach them. They're gonna observe the world through my eyes too, right? Yeah. So I need to set a role model, right? I need to be a role model for them. Yeah. And so I think like with everything that you're telling me and the reason that you actually stopped, you know, after going, I feel like God guided you to this moment right now. And it perhaps it could be so that you could enter into the fold of Islam. And it doesn't take anything from you, it just takes you to testify those two words. What do you think about that? Yeah, that's fantastic. Do, would you like to become Muslim today? Again, it's... I like, the, I really do like it. I, uh, Yeah, I guess, uh, well, regardless of what I... Like you have your whole life today. to learn, to research, to educate yourself. To educate myself on To it, increase right. in practice. Exactly. Right? right? Right. But as long as you believe in those two base foundations, that you believe in Allah, you don't do idol worship, and you believe in the proper Muhammad as that last divine messenger, peace be upon him, yeah. that makes you Muslim. Mm -hmm. And that's like, that's the foundation that now you can build everything else on. Right. And you already believe that. Right. All it takes is just a test of testimony of faith. Well, is that what we call the shahada? The shahada. Yeah. What is the, is that a uh, sort of? So basically, me and you right here, we can do it right here. Mm. It's basically you would say in Arabic the translation that I testify that there is no god worthy of worship except Allah in truth, and I testify that the Prophet Muhammad is his final slave and messenger. That's it. If anybody says that. They're Muslim. They are Muslim. It's sort of like a like a, a right. Yeah. Like a right of entry. Yeah. That's that's the that's the key to enter Islam, and that's like you you believe it in your heart, you say it on your tongue, and you profess it with your with your actions. With your actions. I see. That's really that's an awesome. One. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Part of my language. No, no, I get it. It's uh, a bit. It's it, emotional. It's, it's cool. It's uh, it's it's a lot. I uh, I didn't expect to stop here, <laughs> but uh, yeah. that's what I mean. Like God I mean, kind of guided very, you. Right? It's very cool. Yeah, yeah. You could say. Um, it doesn't cost you anything. I know. I, I I know. It's just yeah. Yes. I I just don't want to um. I don't want to disrespect by not being certain of my decision. I suppose okay. I, I don't want to just jump into yeah. and you know say the thing you. I I don't want to disrespect by. Because no. I'm fascinated. I, I, I genuinely am. I yeah. find this so interesting, man. Yeah. And I really do want to read up on this and research it. And, like, best case scenario, maybe, yeah, maybe I do become Muslim at the end of it. And yeah. I've, and I've, I feel like I've, I've joined some, something something good. Yeah. Something that is better. But, yeah, I I, uh, I don't want to, like, disrespect you guys by um, doing something I don't feel personally no, ready no, no. for. Brother, Brendan. Yeah. Like, even when you came here, I was like, this guy might be Muslim because you have our beard already. <laughs> you have like our beard and then you trim the mustache like proper mustache. I was like, is he Muslim? I don't know. I can't tell. But it was like, I felt like maybe this is like, you know, like the reason you're here is Allah guiding you. And I wouldn't want, I don't want to force you into anything you don't want to agree to. But it's just the fact that you told me that you believe in Allah. Yeah. You don't, course. you don't do idol worship. And you're inclined to believe that the Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Now the question that I have to ask you then is, do you believe this Quran is the, is the word of God? Like, let me ask you something. Okay. Just open it to this first page here, right? Sure. I just want to, I just want you to read this first chapter. All Muslims recite this chapter. Okay. Seventeen times a day at least. Wow. Okay. In Arabic, but this is the English translation. So it says here. In the, name, In the of name of Allah, the entirely merciful, the especially merciful. All praise is due to Allah, Lord of the worlds, the entirely merciful, the especially merciful. Sovereign of the day of recompense, it is you we worship and you we ask for help. Guide us to the straight path, the path of those upon whom you have bestowed favor, not of those who have earned your anger, or of those who are astray. What do you think when you read that? I think it's a, I think it's a fantastic message. The path of those upon whom you, 
those who have earned your anger or those who are astray. So in regards yeah. to this, right, like we're praising Allah, we're singling him out as that one Is God it? that's worthy of worship. Right. Right? We're seeking assistance only from him. Oh shit, I'm sorry. It's okay, don't worry about it. We're seeking assistance only from him, meaning in Islam we call it Tawheed, Islamic monotheism. Okay. We're not making any sort of partners and we're right. going through any intermediaries. Mm. And that last part that you were kind of like highlighting, mm. not the path of those who have earned your anger. Or earned your anger. Yeah. So in regards to that, we would, it is told that those are the Jews and the Christians. The reason is, is the Jews had a lot of knowledge, mm. right? They have a lot of knowledge mm. in regards to what was given to them from the Torah and the Talmud or just the Torah. Yeah. But when they were implementing that knowledge or when they were worshipping God, they didn't have any sort of uh, uh, any any compassion in the way that they were dealing with that knowledge. Does that mm. make sense? Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. And then with regards to the Christians, they were having a lot of compassion, a lot of worship for God. But they weren't doing it with any knowledge, meaning that they were creating partners with God, believing in a trinity, believing that Jesus born of a woman is God. Mm. All of these things were a means for them to be earning the anger of Allah. Earning the anger of Allah. Exactly. Okay, I see what you're saying. And it's the most devastating thing for you to say that Allah has taken a son or that Allah has a partner because Allah is, as we mentioned in that theology of faith, right. He's one. He's he's one. He doesn't produce, he doesn't exactly, exactly procreate. And I, he's I, nothing like him, right? Nothing so, like a human, like a like man. Yeah, I understand. So it's like ascribing, it, it, for an easy example, like if you were to, if you had your mother with you and you called somebody else your mother in front of your mother, <laughs> she would be choked. She'd be yeah. like, like, why are you? I bore you for yeah, nine of months. Course. Like, do you know what I went through? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, no <laughs> doubt. She'd right? be choked, right? Yeah. But like, so that's kind of that's a. It's not a. It's not a good enough example, but that's kind of like. I see what you're just, saying. Just I understand that it's like. A, it's sort of. It, it's exactly like a, what? Like, how could you think that? I would say it's an injustice. Like, it's an injustice to the Creator to ascribe to, something else to Him. Like, I see. I see what you're saying. Yeah, that's because like you want to be just. You want to be. You want to have. Uh, you want to be right in the way that you ascribe what you ascribe to people, the characteristics you give to people, the descriptions you give to people. Mm -hmm. And if you're not doing that, then you're essentially unjust, right? Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. So in regards to that, yeah. what you just read from the Qur'an, yeah. does that seem like it could have come from anybody other than the Creator? No, I don't, I don't believe so. So that's kind of another indication, I feel, that the Qur'an was given to the Prophet Muhammad, meaning peace be upon him, so that would mean that he has to be that true prophet. If he, what you're reading, you're claiming is from the Creator. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, yeah. with what I just laid out for <laughs> you right now, I'm not trying to convince you to take your shahada right now. Mm -hmm. But again, I don't want you to leave and something happen to you and and it not be a case. And you not I, be a Muslim. I understand that. Um, and it doesn't cost you anything. It's a ten-second phrase. I know. Just like you met, but but like you said, you just have to believe it in your heart. It, it is, it is believing it in my heart. I, I've always been, again, a skeptic. I don't want to, again, I, the last thing I want to do, because I, I, like, this has been fantastic. This yeah. is really cool. It's been eye opening. It's been, like, educational for me. The last thing I ever want to do is disrespect you guys or your culture by saying the shahad and then not feeling it. No, that's true. Right? You know yeah. what I mean? I don't want to accept something that I'm not ready to, yeah, to no, do for so sure. for. Why don't um, I give you my number? Absolutely. And I would love that. Anytime that you, after you've read and you've kind of come to that place of certainty in your life, yeah, you're like, hey, like, I'm ready to enter now. Yeah. You call me, you text me. We're here every Saturday morning. So if you find yourself after. Oh, yeah, yeah. You guys are set up here every yeah, Saturday. Yeah. Somewhere in the park today we chose here. At least here. somewhere in Holland, yeah, yeah. <laughs> around. Yeah. But if you find right yourself on. in a situation where you're like, yeah, I'm ready now. Don't feel, don't hesitate to text me. Don't hesitate to call me. I would love that, man. But yeah, just That'd like be awesome. Try to try to be mindful that you know death is certain. Like you said, yeah, yeah. the one thing we all share. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I just I, I obviously I fear for you. I hope that you know that you're guided uh, from after you leave this conversation. But I always want you to be mindful that only thing that's certain is death, and I don't want you to like take too long. And then also be mindful that there's something called shape on the devil. 
for you. He doesn't want you to enter the fold of Islam. He doesn't want you to come to the truth. He wants me to reject. Exactly. Uh, exactly. That's actually why he's called the rejected one. Oh, fascinating. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because he was, when uh, Adam was created, peace be upon him, uh, Allah commanded the angels and, 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 and him and the jinn to bow down to Adam out of uh, honor. Because uh, the Quran talks about how we have certainly honored uh, Adam and the children of Adam, human beings. Right, yeah. But Satan got proud and prideful and said, why would I bow down to Adam, a human being? I'm created from fire, the jinn and all the, the that type of creation, they're created from fire. Yeah. And human beings are created from mud, dirt, dust, things from the earth. Right? So why would, he's putting himself above, right? Right. And Allah basically responded and said, you don't know what I know. Meaning like, and this is kind of an explanation for you, that me and you, we have the ability of free will. Right? Yeah. The angels, they don't have free will. They just worship Allah day and night and carry out whatever commands He does. Yeah. But me and you, we have a choice, right? Like you mentioned, like whatever you're doing before in your life, once you had a, a, a son, you're like, now I have to be better. Yeah. So now you're making choices to be better, Yeah. right? right. So that's kind of like the honor that's given to human beings because we have choices to either deviate from the straight path or to remain on the straight path. And it's harder to be on the straight path than it is to deviate because right. all of our desires are off of the straight path. Mm -hmm. Like being promiscuous, drinking, yeah, drinking drugs, drinking, smoking, whatever it stuff, is, right? right? It's always vices. Ex vices are off of the straight path. Yeah. But the straight path is hard to be on. But those that try to stay on the straight path, they're doing it for no other reason other than they're willing themselves to do it. And that's what brings us to, if we do so, we're at a higher level than the angels because we're doing it out of choice. Out of choice rather than necessity. Exactly. I see what you're saying. Exactly. So that's why when Shaitan did, when the devil did that, he was called, you're no longer going to have any chance of entering heaven. You're going to be cursed. He's the cursed one, the rejected one. And we actually say that before we recite any Quran, we say, rajim. Oh, I, I seek refuge in Allah from Shaitan, the cursed one, the rejected one. Oh, yeah. Wow. So it's actually something like interesting that you just thought about. So I just wanted to remind you that, remember that there is this entity. He's going to try and deviate you from coming into the fold of Islam because he knows the second you take that Shahada, you are eventually going to enter heaven. I see. And that's kind of his whole job on <laughs> earth. His whole job is to people, stop people from to stop people. converting or exactly. from entering Islam. I yeah. See. Wow. And that's that's fascinating. That's really cool. Yeah. I mean, so, not really cool. So. <laughs> but you know what I mean. But it's enlightening for you to know. Yeah, it's enlightening. It yeah. is absolutely. It's uh, it's eye opening. It's uh, it's definitely something to think about for yeah. sure. So I'm gonna give you my number off camera so that nobody can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell uh, it now. <laughs> and then, uh, my hope is that you know I hear from you soon because it was like a really stimulating conversation. Yeah, yeah, like absolutely. You were sincere, um, and that's one of the the like the conditions for somebody to be able to enter the fold of Islam is that they have to be sincere. Sincerity, yeah. And I haven't seen anything from you to make me feel like you aren't sincere. You've only been like respectful, good mannered and, and, and seem to be sincere. I appreciate it. So that. I hope that um, you know, I'll, I'll make dua, I'll make a supplication to Allah, that Allah guides you to the truth and that He instills in you that guidance and that He keeps you steadfast upon it when you make the decision to accept Islam. And I hope that, you know, He prolongs your life until that happens. That's all shot. Sure. I appreciate that so much. الله يدعو إلى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم